Hello everyone, welcome back to my page. Today I wanted to discuss when is a good time to let go of a relationship. I've had so many of you message me and ask me this question like, do I give up or do I continue fighting? When you're very much in love, quitting and walking away just seems like the coward thing to do and you feel guilty and this what if holds you stagnant in a toxic or just a relationship without any future or just a stale, not a very happy relationship because you're too scared to get out of it in case it's on you, in case you were supposed to do something and you didn't. So you're holding on to actually nothing and wasting yours and your partner's time. So it's important for us to recognize the signs, understand, that it isn't about us keep on trying. It has to be a two-way thing. And if you're not happy or satisfied, that's enough of a reason for you to get up and walk away and do what's right for you. So we need to be able to evaluate if the relationship is right for us and it's worth fighting for, or it's time to let go and realize that this not everybody that comes into your life is supposed to be the one. If you haven't been to my page before, I'm Hamasa. I look at mental and emotional well-being as well as personal development and just day-to-day -day issues. Please subscribe to my page so that you're up to date with all my content. Um, and for my returning followers, welcome back. So I'm going to start this off and get to the point because I feel like we faffed enough in like dead in relationships, so why faff with the video? Let's just get down to it and not waste any more time on someone that is not supposed to be in our lives. First thing, ask yourself. A lot of the times when you're stuck in these relationships, the reason you can't get up and leave isn't necessarily to do with your partner. Most times it's to do with you. You have certain insecurities and certain fears that you don't want to face by yourself. So you'd rather hold on to something with a dead end or not that you don't really want to be there than to actually face your fears. So that's why these questions are important for you to really break them down and see what you're doing to play a part in this. Because remember, that's the only person that you have control over. It's you, not your partner. So you need to see the role that you play and how you're holding on to this and just keeping yourself there. So like I said, ask yourself, why are you wanting to be with this person? What is it about this person that makes you want to be with them? It's usually like how I feel like they won't cheat on me. I feel like they won't disrespect, they don't won't disrespect me. Like it happened to me in the past. So you're comparing it to your past relationships and because this person isn't giving you all the crap that the previous person gave you to you, that's an enough reason to stick around. But if you really look at why you're around this person and why you're holding on to this, it's because of the things that you feel, not because of a love and a connection, not because we love each other, He's a great person. He does this for me. He does that for me. Like he, he pours himself into me. He makes the effort. He shows me that this is why I want this man or this woman. It's usually like, I feel like they won't cheat on me. So it's to do with your needs and things that you haven't felt that were need in the, met in the past. And you're projecting that and translating that in this current relationship. So you're with this person due to you feeling wanting to feel secure. You feeling like you won't get cheated on are not reasons. That's settling. That's not a reason to be in a relationship with someone. If you want to be in a relationship with someone, it has to be love and respect and connection mutually. That's when the relationship is solid and right. So anything in between, like my family's pressuring me into being into a in a relationship, all my friends are getting married and I feel left behind. Um, I got cheated on in the past and this person wouldn't necessarily cheat on me, so I'm sticking around. Those are your issues. So by you holding on to someone that's not necessarily right for you, you're kind of avoiding facing things that you're insecu insecure in or things that you haven't healed in the past. 
So that's why this question is so important for you to ask yourself first and foremost. Why do I want to be with this person? Is it because we have a great connection and are very much in love and can't see myself with anyone else but this person? Or is it because you're getting certain needs and insecurities met, so you're settling? My next point closely links to my first point, and that is, do you actually love this person? Or is it attachment? Because I find that most people, when they're in unhappy relationships, they tend to use the word love as a protection layer. Now, if you tell your friends that, oh, I'm dating this guy and I don't want to leave because I don't want to be lonely, but I'm not really happy in it, in the relationship, your friends are going to turn around and say to you, get the hell out. Why are you with someone? Because you're scared of being lonely. That's not reason to tolerate a bad relationship. Or if you tell people, your family, I'm with this person because all my friends got married, but I don't actually want to be with this person because I'm not really happy with them. They would then turn around and say the same thing. You shouldn't be with this person just because your friends are doing it. So love is something that people use as an excuse sometimes. So saying to someone, to your friends, I can't leave this woman because I love her. Your friends are not going to probably turn around and say to you, yeah, you should leave her. She's bad. Because when you say you love someone, it's kind of justifiable for you to tolerate a certain level of crap because people just are very scared to tell you to walk away from your love. And that's why usually people tend to say, oh, I love him so much or I love her so much and I can't live without them. But really, it's more a habit and an attachment. So you really need to like step aside and think, is this mutual? Do I feel secure, safe, happy? joyous? Do they bring things to my life? Do they add value to my life? Are they elevating anything in me? Do they bring my best qualities out? Am I in a place where I'm my best self with them? Is this how I feel in this relationship? And most times when you ask those questions, because that's what love is supposed to be, when it's a loving, happy relationship and it's genuine and you guys have had a couple disagreements, a couple arguments, and now you're questioning whether you should stick around, and it's very evident to you to see for you to see that no, this is actually a very loving, great relationship and we're having issues. But if you actually sit yourself down and really determine whether what you feel for this person or what this person's feeling for you is a matter of attachment and convenience or is it genuinely those amazing feelings, most times it's probably attachment and convenience because you wouldn't be sitting there having this conversation with yourself if you felt all those loving things in the first place. So the fact that you're here really questioning, do I continue being with this person or not, is because there is something that's crucially wrong here. You're un genuinely unhappy, but you, you're justifying it to yourself and your friends that it's, it's love. So make sure that you know whether it's attachment or love. And once you decipher between the two, it'll be very easy for you to make a decision or stick with that decision once you have accepted that. The next thing I would recommend that you should do before completely cutting someone off or calling it a day on a relationship is to see whether you have really expressed yourself clearly about how you feel and your needs. By expressing yourself, I don't mean in an argument, you know, I want this and you're not listening to me. No, it needs to be done in a very clear, very loving, respectful way. Because you have to get that off you. Certain things could be just a lack of communication and can be resolved. So you need to be able to communicate this and tell people how you really, really feel about the situation, the good, the bad, the ugly, but everything. Because if it's depending on that conversation, if that's the last thing for you to make a decision, you really need to get it all out of your system and say it. This may not necessarily be a verbal communication. You could write a letter, you could write an email, because that way you're writing it all down, you're looking at it to see whether you got it all out of your system, 
your partner then has something to refer back to, to read over, to let it sink in, to digest. It's a great way. But if you feel like your partner isn't someone who would read a long email or don't do it on text, I wouldn't recommend WhatsApp essays and text messages, but like take your time, write a thorough, long, expressive, but very loving and very respectful email, letter, whatever that may be. If it, that, that doesn't work for you, then you can also do it verbally, of course, but make sure that the way you approach the topic and how you discuss this comes across in the right way. Because most people, the minute you criticize or start picking at them or pointing out things that you're not happy with, automatically get defensive, it's human nature. And once that happens, they've shut you out. You're not gonna get your answers, you're not gonna get any uh, feedback, it's not gonna sink in because you've already set the mood and the precedent for them to be a little bit on the defense and just try and listen to, ha to have an answer back rather than digest what you're saying. So you're not gonna get the desired effect if you don't approach it correctly. So your tone, how you speak, how you express yourself has to be done the right way for you to get any sort of answers and kind of know where you stand in this relationship. So it has to be done with a lot of respect and just like, this is how I feel. Take ownership for the things that you feel about it. And this is why I'm unhappy. And this is the reason that I'm getting pushed out. I wanted to speak to you, see where you, how you feel, where you stand. And I really want this to work, but if my needs are not getting met, then I have to do what's right for me. And I have to think about what's right for me. That way you're kind of keeping the conversation open and you're not attacking, you're just expressing your concerns. Okay, so once you've covered all your bases and you've done the things that you were supposed to do, you can then take a step back and evaluate and see the effort that's reciprocated once you've expressed your concerns. Having said that, please understand that people don't just change or wake up overnight and they're a different person. It will take time, effort, work, trial and error, and some little mistakes down the road for things to pick up. But as long as there is some sort of effort and you see that they're trying and you see that they're conscious of the things you've said, then that's a good sign. But I wanted to make a point here because what happens most times is that when you point out something that your partner did wrong and something that you're not happy with, they then take that into account and start making up, making it up to you. You tend to take a step back and be like, well, I haven't done anything wrong. My feelings are justifiable. I don't need to be as affectionate. I don't need to be as nice. I don't need to make as much effort because I'm the victim here. And it's their job to fix this, which is exactly where you shoot yourself in the foot. If you don't acknowledge and appreciate and reciprocate that effort, this isn't gonna work. This is why I say it always has to be a two-way thing. Even when someone else is in the wrong, you still have to do your part to help resolve that wrong together. You have to give the, your partner the incentive, the motivation and the reward for them making the effort and improving and trying to show you the things that you pointed out. So that's why you both have to pour yourselves into the relationship and give it your all. That's what it means, let's work on things, not you sitting there pointing out all their wrongs and then just sitting back and being, mm -hmm, it's your fault, so you need to fix this. It just doesn't work like that. Having said that, there are certain things that you may speak to your partner about and they may just outright turn around and say to you, you know what, this is who I am and this is just what I do. This is how I do things. Let's say your partner is a real homebody and does not like going out or being social and you are a very extroverted person who loves being in the company of other people and being the center of the party and just being out there. You turn around and say to your partner, look, I want you to come out and just let's go out with me. And they turn around and say, no, you know what? I'm really actually prefer being at home. It's just who I am. I don't like being around people that much. Yeah, of course they can make um, compromises and I'm sure they can accompany you and go to certain places but just understand that they will never willingly make plans and want to go out with you because that's just not who they are they've said it to you so those certain things like that cannot be changed so it's a question for you to ask and evaluate whether that's something you can accept and tolerate or they're not right for you 
but other things then can easily be worked on and compromised should both of the partners want to do that. So just remember that there are certain things you can and will change if you both want to and certain things just not possible and you have to accept people for who and what they are. So I just wanted to say that when it comes to your partner and you're complaining about them being disrespectful towards you, them not seeking the help they need to, they're not doing certain things, you have to lead by example and you have to always show up as your best self. So if you're expecting your partner to go and see a therapist, you need to take a minute to yourself and think, but am I doing that? I'm clearly in this relationship because I've attracted things that I've not healed, therefore I'm someone with someone broken. So that's what I like and I find secure. So if I find this secure, it means that there are things in me that I haven't also healed. So have I taken responsibility for my part to play? Have I done what I need to do to fix this, to fix myself, to grow, to heal, when I'm expecting my partner to do that? So always remember that you also like a relationship is a two way thing and you also have your part to play. And like I said, you can only take responsibility for yourself. So remember that whatever you expect your partner to do, you also have to reciprocate it to a certain level or to their level and match their energy and make it show them that you're in this as much as you want them to be in this. And lastly, Deep down, if you're religious or spiritual or wh who, whichever, whatever you gives you peace and you feel close to, that's something that always helps me is to really sit with my gut feeling and my intuition and think, what do I really feel inside? And 90% of the time, you already have the answer or in the back of your head, you already know what you want and how you feel. But... It's just you can't verbalize that you can't interpret what that feeling means so if it's prayer or meditation or whatever it is you really do have all the answers deep down so as much as you feel like a quitter or you don't want to walk away from something deep down you kind of know this isn't right for me so the sooner you listen to that and take action and tune into your intuition and your gut feeling the less headache and the less heartache you'll experience. So it's important for us to be able to sit with that for a minute and really understand what that energy is telling us. I hope you found this video helpful. I know it's a lot to unpack and take in, but like I said, a lot of these things you feel like, oh, it's them, my partner, da da da, but it's really, you can control yourself, you know what you want, and when you take a minute to self-reflect, you kind of have all the answers within yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe to my page, like and comment on this video, and I will see you guys here again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.